scaremongering is not going anywhere. Oh, really? <laughs> Question number six, the Honourable Paul Goldsby. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Forestry. How does he arrive at the conclusion that the, quote, $480 million odd dollars, end quote, assessed, accessed from the Provincial Growth Fund for Forestry will lead to at least 2,000 jobs, unspecified commercial returns and other returns that he conceives to be, quote, nigh on $3 billion? And, specifically, what are the components of the nigh on $3 billion sum? The Honourable Shane Jones. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, after having reflected on yesterday's chastenment, I shall be politic in this answer and not personally political. The figure of 2,000... Well, noteworthy, I'm sure. <laughs> the figure of 2,000 jobs was arrived at after officials' advice and the CEO of Computens identify that there is a substantial shortfall and that the Billion Tree strategy will require at least 2,000 people to come into the industry. This is also on top of the natural churn of over 4,000 people as the industry replenishes itself. In respect of the sky-high figure for the New Zealand economy of $3 billion, that comprises $2.7 billion which has been received from officials as a consequence of our billion tree strategy, we will enjoy that upside, only modestly reducing the bill left by the last regime of $32 billion left what? behind as a consequence of signing up to climate change obligations but doing very little at home. The remaining 300 million, sir, and please indulge me, the remaining 300 million will naturally come from the upside of the overseas investment changes, bringing the NEFs off the couch, and a host of other benefits that regional economies will enjoy as a consequence of the $480 million investment. Supplementary. Uh, is he happy to answer questions on this topic, or is it a waste of his precious time to deal with such paltry and trivial matters? Order, order, order. The member will um, has used one supplementary now. And if he, if he wants to continue, he, he will start again on another one. Supplementary. Uh, how many hectares of trees did he put into the calculator to arrive at his $2.7 billion figure? And what is the carbon price it's based on? Uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, uh, the uh, billion tree strategy uh, covers the existing 500,000 hectares, value of which will be increased as a consequence of our Provincial Go Growth Fund infrastructure interventions and the refinements from the Overseas Investment Office. In respect of the um, value of the carbon, that work is underway and it would be unwise to speculate as to how far the value of carbon goes. We wouldn't want to unnecessarily spook that market. So the figure of $2.7 billion reflects the work of both the current industry, the new plantings and the improvements, sir, in the area of the Overseas Investment Office changes and legislative improvements. Supplementary, is the $2.7 billion extra worth of benefit verified by the Treasury? And if so, will he release all the official advice relating to the forestry investment? Uh, sir, uh, in accordance with my largely transparent manner, I will gladly provide at an appropriate time information which lies behind the analysis undertaken by my colleague Mr Shaw and myself on the question of exposing New Zealand industry to the full costs of the just transition. I am very forward in ensuring that stakeholders in New Zealand realise that this is a costly transition, and the more support I enjoy through the Billion Tree strategy, the less the financial impost will be on other segments of the economy. Given his reference to an open and transparent matter, why has he still not released a single funding agreement for any of the projects uh, funded by the Provincial Growth Fund, despite many repeated requests? Uh, uh, 
Uh, continuing on, and continuing, Mr. Speaker, uncharacteristically in a politic vein, uh, I would remind the House that commercial transactions, if I start there, it is not appropriate to spill the innards of such transactions for short term political parliamentary partisanship. That uh, lowers the decorum of the House. In relation to other, uh, other interventions in the broader uh, provincial growth fund, uh, the, uh, the disclosure is work in progress, but uh, I'm confident sooner rather than later his questions, uh, the members' questions, can be answered through better disclosure. But I would point out where commercial sensitivity is at stake, he should follow the advice of his former leader, John Key. Is the public entitled to know exactly where $3 billion is going to be spent over the next three years in terms of what specific arrangements have been made and what taxpayers are getting for the investment. Speaker. I, I couldn't agree more with the member's question. It is a significant amount of money. The Cabinet paper establishing the fund is already available. The processes, the uh, investment statement released by myself two weeks ago are a clear reflection of the desire to be transparent. But there is a caveat. A number of these transactions deserve to enjoy a certain level of confidentiality. That is the way of modern commerce. It may not be the way of rough parliamentary politics, but I'll go with the former and not the latter. Question number seven, Mark Patterson. Mr. Speaker. Uh, also to the Minister of